Junyi is an immortal practitioner who has been practicing with his ancestors since childhood in the mountains. One day, Grandmaster resolutely disappeared, leaving only a letter and a jade pendant. Two air, I ran for my life and can't take you away. I can only leave you a space magic weapon. All the treasures of my master are inside. Hello, come on, practice hard, and strive to survive. Junyi couldn't understand the meaning of Grandmaster's last sentence. This mountain is fine, there is no danger. Until the celestial phenomena were abnormal, all the birds and animals in the forest had changed their appearance. The great white snake, who had been staying on Liang for over a decade, spoke up and became a fairy. Junyi feels that this world is too crazy. For sixteen years, cognition has collapsed with a bang, and everything familiar has become unfamiliar. I can't stay in the woods anymore, and coincidentally, my grandfather is not here. Junyi decided to go down the mountain to take a look. However, what she didn't know was that the people at the foot of the mountain were already desperate and numb. A world of purgatory keywords of the novel. She of the end, comes from the mountains without a pop dot up window, she of the end, comes from the mountains. Download the complete text, and read the latest chapters. Chapter 1. Linyuan Jade Pendant. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1 Lingyuan Jade Pendant Chapter 1 The gentle afterglow filtered through the leaves, leaving colorful shadows scattered on the fallen ground. Among the lush hundred Zhang mountains, there is a high place by the water, nestled against a cave. Juni glanced at his cloth clothes and walked leisurely towards the cave, carrying his newly caught fish. From a distance, he shouted, I'm back. She started with a knife and fell cleanly on the rock at the entrance of the cave, cutting open the fish in her hand, scraping off scales and bones. There was no response in the cave for a long time, and Junyi thought that his ancestor had fallen asleep in meditation. He continued his movements and, after setting up the bonfire, saw that his ancestor had not yet come out, went in and called out. There are small mountain-like books in the cave, with a complete collection of old cultural, historical, and the eight trigrams of the Book of Changes, big, small, and old. Jun Yi's gaze swept around, not seeing the figure of his ancestor, but he found a package and a letter on the stone table. Upon seeing this, Jun Yi's heart tightened and he slowly walked forward. Opening the letter, an exquisitely crafted white jade pendant fell out. It was round and simple, without any carving, but the jade was gentle and the veins were clear. At first glance, it was of high quality. Junyi quickly picked up the jade pendant and saw that there were no scars on it. He breathed a sigh of relief and turned his gaze to the content of the letter. My disciple personally enlightens me I fled for my master's life. The Linyuan jade pendant is all my belongings, and all of my treasures are inside. You must guard it well. Don't use it recklessly until it's time to save your life. Have you seen that package? Inside is the disciple's uniform of our sect, a top dot grade ice zen robe. It can also be considered a good thing in this world. You are my personal disciple, put it on. Maybe we can still save our lives in critical moments. The world is going to be chaotic, strive to survive Junyi opened the package and found a soft white long shirt inside. What does Grandmaster mean by this? When I left in the morning, I was still fine, but I'm not seeing anyone now. Why run for life? Where did the enemy come from? Also, what does the last sentence mean to strive for survival? Jun Yi couldn't figure out his mind for a moment, and was hesitating when he suddenly thought of the fish at the entrance of the cave. He slapped his forehead and exclaimed that it was not good. Just now, there was a delay in entering, and when Jun Yi came out again, he looked at the stone mound at the door. The well-managed fish were indeed nowhere to be found. Junyi was so angry that he didn't need to think about it. He knew that the fish must have gone into the belly of a white snake perched on the top of the cave. The white snake has been hovering above the entrance of the cave since Junyi had memories. He is five or six meters long, with a bull mouth that thick and a silver-white body. When viewed closely under the moonlight, 
he appears to be shining brightly. It mostly sleeps at the entrance of the cave and never hurts anyone. Occasionally waking up, either rubbing against food or basking in the sun. Grandmaster said that the white snake has spiritual awareness, which is very rare in this lower world. So it didn't harm the life of the white snake. It also doesn't hibernate like other snakes. In winter, when heavy snow falls, it occasionally turns into its hole and rubs against the fire without skin or face. Two people and one snake have been living like this for over a decade. When Junyi was 12 or 13 years old, he saw the legend of the white snake in a book and has been calling it the white snake goddess ever since. Girl. I ate your fish, aren't you angry? A gentle and magnetic male voice sounded behind his head, with a strange accent. Junyi turned around vigilantly and saw the white goddess crouching in the cave, spitting out snake venom. Did it. Speak. Junyi tilted her head slightly, her expression blank. She moved her mouth, and countless thoughts spread in her mind. In the end, a seemingly unrelated sentence popped out of her mouth. You. So you're public. Bai Nyang Nyang was somewhat speechless. He rolled his big eyes in a very humane way, and then swaggered down half of his body. Aren't you curious about anything else? I saw the old man leave. He nodded at the jade pendant in Jun Yi's hand with his head in the air, and then said, This thing is a treasure. Are you? Refined. Jun Yi tried to ignore the influence of the unclear accent and tried to regain her sanity from the impact of White Snake's speech. She looked at the jade pendant in her hand and then at White Empress, with a hint of confusion on her face. Can I trust you? Jun Yi asked. Upon hearing this, Bai Nyang Nyang shook her head with a hint of helplessness and said, You child, don't believe me yet. The old man told me how to use this treasure, but you need to help me with something before I can help you. Originally, it was the ancestral master who instructed that should be trustworthy, I'll help you. Jun Yi spread out her hand, revealing the white jade pendant inside. She simply extended her hand forward and asked, How do you use it? Bai Nyang Nyang thought it would take some time to persuade Junyi, but she didn't expect Junyi to believe him without saying a few words. Now, she widened her eyes in disbelief. If you don't ask me what I need you to help me with, just agree. Upon hearing this, Junyi paused and asked seriously, Can you not keep your word? Bai Nyang Nyang quickly denied, Don't talk nonsense. I'm not an internal snake. I keep my word. Juni nodded and said, That's enough. Bai Nyang Nyang. You can use it with just a drop of blood, Bai Nyang Nyang muttered to herself, You doll doesn't seem like a cunning person. Don't break your promise, just help me if you say you're helping me. Juni let out a sigh, then bit his finger without any hesitation and dripped blood onto the jade pendant. A white light flashed by, and a cool spiritual power surged through the meridians. Junyi's divine sense was explored, and the next second he appeared in the spatial jade pendant. There is a long and quaint corridor in front of me, as if I can't see my head. There are dragons and phoenixes on both sides, each holding a bead in their mouth, swallowing clouds and exhaling mist. Junyi lifted his foot and walked forward, but an invisible wall appeared in front of him, preventing him from moving forward. There are two doors on the left and right sides, one with the words, Waste and Miscellaneous Items, and the other with the words, Rest Room. Isn't Grandmaster treating this place as his own little nest? Is there anything good inside? Junyi pondered for a moment and walked into the lounge. The scene at the destination made her take a deep breath of air. A green grassland, like a natural blanket. The bright sunshine shines on the vast expanse of heaven and earth. In a small world, there stood a two-dot story small attic. Jin Yi wanted to go and take a look, and with this thought in mind, he stood in front of the small attic in the blink of an eye. However, just as the Buick Regal eagerly pushed open the door, the cluttered and empty space that entered the eyes made the Regal feel lost as it closed the door, wishing to open it again. This lounge fully embodies what it means to be alone. 
walking in, the wooden boards under my feet were all creaking. Except for the intact windows and doors, there was a smell of dust inside, as if it had not been opened for hundreds of years. Before pushing open the door, Junyi was still thinking whether her grandfather often threw her out and came here to enjoy the peace and fortune. Now it turns out that she was overthinking. This place is not as good as the well-lit cave. Junyi walked out of the attic and found a lake outside. The water was clear and transparent, but it was so calm and terrifying that there was not even a trace of life. When the thief comes, they shake their heads. Juni walked out of the lounge in disappointment and looked at the words, miscellaneous waste, across from him. Suddenly, he lost interest in pushing the door and walking in. But thinking of the mysterious reason why his ancestor broke away, Junyi still held a glimmer of hope and pushed open the door with his hand. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 Wuji Sword Mutation You are listening at NovelFull.audio the source has no content or has errors. Chapter 3 Escape from the Mountain You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Descending the Mountain Escape Chapter 3 Just now, the brown bear with slightly abnormal red eyes has completely changed its appearance. It has grown more than twice as big as before, with its fur exploding and revealing its blood-red skin. Under its brown fur, you can see rolling vines. It has an unusually large mouth, revealing two rows of ferocious fangs and a dark green tongue. Its eyes have turned from red to a chilling white, leaving only a black, irrational dot in the middle. Just now, the voice of the white goddess startled it, and it roared towards this side. Then, without seeing anyone, it aimlessly flapped around, and with one palm, several decades old trees broke in the middle. Junyi dodged the falling branches and dodged the sight of the brown bear with a flash of his body. The direction where the brown bear is located is the only way that Junyi knows the way down the mountain. Junyi has been practicing with his ancestors in the mountains since childhood and has never been to places where humans live together, nor has he traveled a hundred miles away. The only thing I know is that after going down the mountain, walking fifty miles up and down on the left, you can see a road belonging to humans. Walking along the road, you can find the city where humans live. I can't stay in the mountains anymore. The only way out for Junyi is right in front of me either run away fast enough, or take the risk of killing it. Junyi hid in the shadow, the infinite sword roaring in his hand, and his heart became entangled. Roar. The brown bear kept roaring, and the vines under its skin seemed like parasites devouring each other. The roar of the brown bear is no longer a demonstration or intimidation, but a painful groan. I'm a mother. Baby. Those things from behind are coming over. The voice of Bai Nyang Nyang suddenly appeared in Junyi's ear. Junyi quickly looked back, and sure enough, the vines were devouring the forest mountains like mudslides. Hey hey. I'm so anxious. Can the doll hear me? That thing's coming over. It's coming over. Bai Nyang Nyang screamed in Jun Yi's ear, reminding her time and time again. Jun Yi's divine sense moved and gave Bai Nyang Nyang a response. Hmm. Oh, hello. You can hear me. Then why don't you run quickly? You're going to die. Bai Nyang Nyang raised her voice eight degrees and hurriedly rubbed against the grass in the space. Junyi let out a sigh again, and without hesitation, as the brown bear charged towards the nearby trees, he stabbed in with a sword from behind. The vines beneath the skin and flesh seemed to feel pain, suddenly stretching out and then frantically elongating, rushing towards the Junyi. Junyi drew his sword and retreated. With a movement of his wrist, his sword energy cut through several elongated vines. This sword doesn't seem to cause any damage to the brown bear. The brown bear turned around and roared before pouncing. Junyi took two steps back and dodged the attack of the brown bear sideways. This time, without reservation, Lingbu raised his sword and cut off the bear's head. The brown bear twisted meaninglessly on the ground twice, then became completely unable to move and lost its vitality. 
The white goddess in the Lingyuan jade pendant was stunned. Oh my, I'll go. Are you the Junyi that I've seen since I was young? When did you become so powerful? It's not that I'm powerful, it's this sword that's powerful. The infinite sword, without even a drop of blood, still shines clean in the sunlight, like an unstained light. Junyi looked at the body of the brown bear on the ground, silent and unable to see any joy or sorrow. This is her first time killing any life other than fish, although she doesn't know if it's still considered a life. Junyi stood up without stopping and quickly ran down the mountain. The vines behind were tidal-like, and soon devoured the body of the brown bear. The whole forest seems to have come to life, except for the rushing plants, no living creatures are willing to stay, room 217, second floor, male dormitory of a certain university in H City. The scattered fuel on the white porcelain floor mixed together, vaguely resembling this chaotic university. Unable to distinguish between red, white, blue, and purple. The messy paintings scattered on the ground, with some landscape oil paintings and some real dot life sketches depicting the university before the disaster. The university crowd in the painting is bustling and lively, with students chatting and laughing, filled with youth and vitality, in stark contrast to the current bleak scene of the university campus. A few sketches of the popular actress Maru Kiba were neatly placed on a clean bedsheet by the workers. Li Qing suppressed his heart like a drum, hiding in a corner without daring to move. A few bloodstained and terrifying zombies roamed outside the corridor. Some of them are wearing school uniforms, and a few days ago they were Li Qing's good roommates and buddies. Li Qing, whose ears and hearing are countless times more sensitive, is like a frightened bird. Any slight wind or grass movement can cause him to collapse mentally. He could clearly hear a few wandering zombies in the hallway, and even a few in the entire teaching building. He could also clearly hear the sound of them gnawing on their own kind and chewing on the human body. There is also a terrifying low growl occasionally emitted from the throat. His extremely sensitive hearing caused him pain and madness, as if someone was constantly shouting and screaming in his ear. Li Qing hugged the humanoid pillow in her arms and silently recited, Mu Yi Maru. You are my light, the light in the darkness. Suddenly, there was a faint sound of a car engine in the distance, and Li Qing seemed to hear the sound of heaven. He straightened up with excitement, propped up his ears, and his expression was never more serious than before. Thank goodness. He is so grateful for his keen hearing for the first time. Li Qing lightly lowered her cat waist, quickly opened a gap at the curtain, and then pushed her heavy black framed eyes on the bridge of her nose, peering into a narrow gap to see the outside world. Eyes that haven't seen sunlight for several days, everything they see is a bit blurry. The nearsighted eye, stimulated by the light source, couldn't bear the weight and twitched a few times. He blinked hard, reached out and rubbed, and the scene in front of him became clear. On the empty playground, there were only a few bodies that had been gnawed into shape, almost dried up in the sunlight. The subtle sound of the car engine is on the nearby official road, not just one, but many. They went from far to near, listening to the sound, heading southeast. Li Qing propped her ears and carefully identified the direction and route of the car's movement. While listening attentively, eerie blood-colored palm patted the fragile glass, with some blood-red flesh hanging on her long nails. The thin and brittle glass made a terrifying creaking sound. Li Qing's heart contracted violently with all four limbs, and he quickly closed the curtains with rare movements. His legs softened and he sat on the cold floor, covering his mouth and trying not to scream. His trembling body shook into a sieve, and his grey-blue sports shirt was wet from his back to his armpits. A drop of sweat slowly fell from the eyelashes, blurring the line of sight. The mutated zombies outside the window are still hovering, and the fragile glass seems to be destroyed at any moment. With a creaking sound as the monster moved. Li Qing could clearly hear the eerie roar from the mutant zombie's throat, as well as the sound of his long tongue dripping saliva. After a while, the mutated zombie seemed to have left, and Li Qing breathed a sigh of relief. Just as I was about to move, 
the window behind me was suddenly pressed open. A hand, long enough to be eerie, reached out through the curtain and pressed against Li Qing's head. The black fingernails with a bloody smell dripped with unknown liquid, pulled out a long thread, and finally landed on Li Qing's shoulder. Li Qing's breathing stopped and his pupils trembled violently. He carefully lowered his waist, moved slowly, and finally hid in a blind corner near the curtains. Fortunately, the mutated zombie did not notice him, withdrew his hand, and soon left. Li Qing's tense nerves relaxed and spread out in place. He slowed down for a while, and after his limbs regained consciousness, he quickly got up and found a map near the school on his roommate's desk. The food in the dormitory is only half a box of cookies left, and the water has been cut off for two days. If he doesn't go out, he will only face one result, which is to be trapped and die here. The sound of the car engine appearing at this moment is undoubtedly the dawn of his survival. Taking out the small flashlight with unstable power supply, Li Qing recalled the sound she had just heard and began to circle and draw along the map. In no time, the target was set on the nearby Century Church. That place matches the direction in which the sound went away just now, and there is a gas station and convenience store next to it. If it were an official government official, they would definitely choose to establish a foothold for survivors there. Even if it's not the military and the team has so many cars, they are likely to be there as a foothold. Li Qing pondered on the map for a while, then selected a few alternative points, and then packed up the things he could use and put them into his backpack. He took a final glance at the dormitory where he had lived for a year and a half, picked up the poster of Kayamaru from the table, took a deep breath in his chest, and silently said, Kayamaru. You are my light, the light in the darkness. Bless me. To live. End of this chapter. Chapter 4. Natural Abyssal Vortex. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 4. Natural Phenomenon. Vortex Chapter 4 Outside the Century Church in H City. A young man dressed in camouflage casually wiped the blood off his face, spat at the blood in his mouth, and raised his gun cleanly to deal with a zombie that was still crawling and not dead. He shook his hand, which was numb from the recoil, and turned back to the church with a handsome gesture. In the center of the church, the radar captain is repeatedly planning the route back to the base with a map. He was dressed in a regular camouflage uniform, with a robust figure and a look of over thirty years old. His broad and thick jaw was covered in a fine beard, and he had been ignored for a few days. His eyes were resolute, like an agile cheetah. Standing there, he couldn't help but feel the strength, making him feel safe. The young man gave a standard military salute to the radar and then reported rigorously, report to Captain. All nearby devourers have been cleared. Captain Tang Mei is leading Team B to refuel the car. The radar saw the situation and patted the young man's buttocks with a gun barrel that was neither light nor heavy. Stop using the southern base system. Go, settle the other survivors. The young man playfully avoided and said, OK. Captain Radar. Radar shook his head helplessly and said, It's so nice to be young. What's going on? Our fearless radar captain thinks he's getting old. Tang Mei walked over half-jokingly. Tang Mei was the deputy captain of the team, with clean short hair and a symmetrical figure, which gave her a sharp look. Radar jokingly pressed the map onto the table of the Century Church and pointed with his finger, saying, Here, here, and here, we can't walk anymore, and there are second-level devourers nearby. Ah ah ah! Zombies! Mutated. Mutated. Before Radar could finish speaking, they heard a commotion among the survivors and immediately pulled the trigger, cautiously looking towards the sound source. There was a commotion in the crowd, and people were like a group of mice seeing cats, running around. The screams of women were piercing the eardrums. Seeing the source of the chaos, the Radar's face was stunned. The young man who was just playfully smiling with the radar is no longer human-like. Unknown objects are surging under half of his face, and his figure is starting to twist. 
His eyes are turning white, and he is reaching out his hand to the radar and blurring, Team. Captain. Ah, ah, ah. Zombies. Woo 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 woo. I don't want to die. Don't push me. Crazy. This world is crazy. Everyone was pushing and shouting in a chaotic manner, crying and cursing in a grand and continuous manner. Bang. A bullet pierced through the young man's head, and the riot came to an abrupt end. In the century church, there was a quiet scene, except for the faint sound of breathing and the sound of bullets landing, the sound of needles falling could be heard. The statue of Jesus looked at everything coldly, with infinite compassion and coldness in his eyes. The radar put away the close-fitting pistol, with a cold and stern face, looking emotionless. Take it out to clean up. The radar calmly ordered. Yes. Two special forces soldiers came to their senses and walked forward, dragging the body of the mutated youth out of sight. The radar slowly turned around, looking cold and resolute, but from an invisible angle, the hand holding the gun trembled uncontrollably. The mutated young man was just laughing and frolicking with him, and in a moment. He ended his life with his own hands. This kind of thing, no matter how many times it has been done, will still be painful. Tang Mei pursed her mouth in a straight line and reached out to point to the map, diverting the radar's attention. When I came over here just now, I checked and the risk will be lower. At such times, no matter how comforting words are, they are pale and powerless. Okay. I'll take a few people to confirm and clear the roadblock later. Radar nodded. In no time, order was quickly restored in the church, and the recent episode seemed like an illusion. People quickly walked out of shock and regained their numbness and despair. In the corner, a beautiful woman tightly covered her face. Her long hair was like clouds, and she was wearing shorts. Her fair and slender thighs were splattered with some blood, and on her smooth skin, it was as if she had spotted a few red plums. It can be seen that the woman is trying her best to conceal her beauty, but her extraordinary temperament and beautiful figure cannot be hidden. A fierce-looking man looked at her up and down as if he was confirming something. He touched his chin and pondered for a while, but was about to approach when he was stopped by a polite man. Brother Wen. She. The fierce man hesitated to speak. The elegant man put his hand to his mouth and gently shook his head. He wore golden glasses, half-length hair scattered on his shoulders, and a handsome and upright person in a beige suit. Even in the apocalypse, he remained clean and looked very dignified. Many people have mixed eyes, don't arrest her here. Wei Yu smiled three times. If someone was present and paid attention to the criminal case, or even paid a little attention, they would recognize him. He is Wen Wen, the perpetrator of a recently rumored wife murder and dismemberment case on the internet. Due to his outstanding appearance, as well as being a medical doctor returning from overseas, and from a wealthy family, he has caused quite a stir in society, and photos of him have also been uploaded online. But now it's the end of the world, and people don't care about whether they have fugitives around them besides food and survival. Whether or not one can live until tomorrow is a question. Maybe a mouthful of water is not clean, or if one is bitten by a zombie outside, one's own life will be at risk. The ferocious man glanced at the woman in the corner and finally nodded at one one, whispering, one, I'll listen to you. With a gentle and kind smile, he casually turned around and made way for a middle-aged couple with a very gentlemanly and friendly demeanor. He looked like a kind and humble young man, and no one would associate him with a murderer. Thank you. The middle-aged couple nodded repeatedly, feeling that they had met a good person. Wen Wen nodded humbly, his gaze sweeping over the woman in the corner, his lips slightly curled up, and a chilling light suddenly flashed in his kind eyes. The woman in the corner felt something and looked around in fear, only to find the blood on her legs. She hurriedly wiped it off. Young man, what do you do, said the middle-aged lady. The gentle gentleman leaned down slightly and said, I am a doctor. Studying medicine. It's great to learn medicine. 
The middle dot aged man beside him responded. Juni searched his heart and soul for a while, but couldn't find a suitable adjective to describe his current mood. She walked on the unfamiliar cold concrete ground, looking at the ruins in front of her, full of scars, and suddenly became helpless. On the street, things recorded in books as cars are lying horizontally, some emitting smoke, and some flipping aside. The street shops were covered in bullet gun marks, and crimson blood splattered on the glass. After an unknown amount of time, it had dried black. Junyi was wearing an ice silk robe left by her grandfather, a pure white and soft ancient robe with excellent texture. She held a boundless sword in her hand and danced with the wind like three thousand ink silk hair draped over her shoulders. She followed suit as she walked through the chaotic streets, as if passing through, out of place. Tall buildings stand in the distance, and the grey sky seems to be shrouded in a haze. Juni stared blankly at everything in front of him, his handsome and cold eyebrows and eyes stunned, leaving only confusion. The world in the book is bustling and lively, not as boring as in the mountains, nor as lifeless as it is now. Roaming After a loud bang, the earth shook and countless cracks appeared on the ground. Junyi quickly swung his sword horizontally and held it in mid-air. The eerie wind came from afar, blowing Junyi's white robe with a hunting sound, almost unable to stabilize the sword. Junyi looked up and saw a natural anomaly. A black vortex appeared in the gray sky, slowly opening up, as if the heavens had opened an eye, about to judge everyone. It emits a strange aura, like a terrifying monster, with its mouth wide open, about to devour this world. At this moment, countless humans looked up at the sky, and the pitch-black vortex, like this sudden disaster, was inexplicable. Countless surviving scholars have gone crazy, and thousands of years of knowledge and biology have collapsed in a mess. Humanity has finally discovered its own ignorance, and ignorance is terrifying that vortex is right there, it exists, it's trembling, end of this chapter. Chapter 5 Speed Variation Li Qing You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Speed Variation Li Qing Chapter 5 Help Help The sound of calling for help came, and Junyi looked up and saw a man with black framed glasses and a backpack running towards him. He looked a bit weak and occasionally stumbled. A large wave of zombies followed behind, some of whom had three legs and ran forward in strange postures. Some have no legs, only a strange row of hands growing on their abdomen, moving rapidly forward. They have large pieces of carrion on their faces, some have skulls protruding, some have three or four heads, some have only teeth and mouth left on one face, and some even have a bunch of grape-like eyes on their arms connected to their belly. The zombies were relentlessly pursuing, and their movements were much faster than those of Li Qing, who was physically exhausted. Li Qing hasn't had enough to eat for several days, and for five whole days he relied on a box of cookies to survive. He was so hungry that his chest pressed against his back, and his legs couldn't even lift up. Faced with life and death, his adrenaline soared, but human physical strength ultimately had its limit. In a daze, a white light flashed through his brain, as if he was almost reborn. As long as he broke through that point, it was reborn however, at this moment, his eyes darkened and he fell to the ground, with no more strength to get up. He covered the poster of the wooden leaf pills stacked in his chest pocket, slowly closed his eyes, and shed tears of despair. Shua Shua Bang, the imagined biting and pain did not come. Li Qing opened his eyes and saw a young girl in ancient white clothing, like a heavenly god descending to earth, holding a long sword and performing cleanly and gracefully to cut off the zombie's head. That girl's skin is like condensed fat, her lips are like rouge, her willow eyebrows and phoenix eyes are stunning but not charming. Temperament cold, agile yet not jumping off. Li Qing was stunned for a moment, thinking it was a hallucination before her death, and there was no response for a moment. It shouldn't be. Even if it's a hallucination before death, what I'm thinking should be that Kayamaru came to save me. Junyi glanced at Li Qing, who was dumbfounded. His thin lips parted slightly and he uttered a word. 
Run. Li Qing suddenly woke up and reached under his glasses, rubbing his eyes hard. True. Real person. He trembled his lower lip, his eyes full of disbelief. Girl, costume, sword. These three things should never have appeared in the apocalypse, but at this moment, they were indeed assembled together and appeared on the streets of the apocalypse, in front of Li Qing. Jin Yi thought that Li Qing had no strength left, so after dealing with the two nearest zombies, he turned around and picked up Li Qing's backpack, stepped on his sword, and quickly rode away. Yu Jin. This is the imperial sword. This is the imperial sword. Li Qing's mouth slightly opened, dumbfounded and unresponsive, but some of her three views and cognition were exploded in her brain. In Li Qing's perception, this kind of thing only exists in fantasy novels or fantasy TV dramas. As a qualified citizen of the 21st century who believes in science, Li Qing never imagined that one day he would personally experience the feeling of flying an imperial sword. It seems that Li Qing's values have been refreshed every day since the disaster struck. Where to run? Junyi stopped at the corner on the roof of a shop. The zombies below are just some low dot level ones and do not climb rocks, walls, or roofs. Li Qing's head, which was almost burned off, shook fiercely and finally connected the wire. He quickly took off his backpack, his hands trembling uncontrollably, like an elderly person with a stroke, his movements difficult and clumsy. But Junyi was very patient, waiting for him to fully open his backpack and then take out a map, trembling and pointing it to Junyi. Here. Here. Li Qing pointed to the map and then to the unique decorated roof of the nearby church. That's where. Go there. Safe. Due to severe sugar and water deficiency in his body, coupled with the intense exercise he had just put in a lot of effort, Li Qing's speech was a bit unclear, and his eyes turned black and his fingers swayed left and right. Junyi's divine sense swept through and found a bottle of inferior Peiyuan pill in the miscellaneous room, covered in dust. Junyi didn't know if it had an expiration date, so he poured out one and casually stuffed it into Li Qing's mouth. The dark pill melts upon entry, with a slightly bitter taste and a hint of sweetness. Li Qing didn't know what it was, he just felt refreshed after finishing it, cleared away hunger and fatigue, his hands stopped trembling, and he spoke fluently. Immortals. Immortals. Let's go there. Century Church, I heard gunshots coming from there. There are troops. This way we can go to the surviving base. All of a sudden, the zombies climbed up like one another. Junyi raised his foot without turning back and kicked the zombies that had just emerged one head down. The action was neat, simple and rude, and Li Qing was stunned. Her voice gently reminded Li Qingdao, My name is Junyi. Li Qing was stunned and instinctively answered, My name is Li Qing, a college student from H City, majoring in art. Ah! Men and women are not compatible in giving and receiving. Junyi didn't know where to take Li Qinghao with him, so he finally picked up Li Qing's backpack again and stood up with his sword. Li Qing once again experienced the feeling of flying as if in a dream. Just as he thought he could reach the century church in the blink of an eye, Junyi put him down and briefly and clearly uttered a word. Run. Flying with a sword is a very spiritual intensive task, and in just a while, Junyi has already used his spiritual power for seven or eight times. If he flew directly to the century church with his sword, it was feared that Junyi would exhaust his spiritual power and die from the exhaustion of Dantian. Ah! Ah! Before Li Qin could react, he saw Junyi pull back the infinite sword with a flick of his hand, and then quickly ran towards the direction Li Qin had said. There was a roar of zombies behind him, and Li Qin was awakened and ran with Junyi on his legs. Immortal! Immortal, wait for me. Li Qing is an art student who has always neglected exercise. Although he doesn't run very slowly, for Junyi, who has been practicing in the mountains since childhood, he is just a turtle speed. Junyi is not in a hurry either, running for a while and waiting for him for a while, just like a parent watching a child. Fortunately, 
Just now Li Qing ran all the way shouting for help, and now 90% of the zombies were behind Li Qing. Occasionally, a few zombies scattered in front of him, and Junyi took action to solve it. Li Qing suddenly wanted to cry. Did he save the Milky Way in his previous life or did he encounter such a guardian god on his deathbed? A section of the road that was originally full of murders and a narrow escape was transformed into a kilometer-long race due to encountering the Junyi. Although there were zombies chasing after him, he didn't have to worry about his life safety at all. Li Qing really wants to count out two heads to the heavens. But now is not the time to count out, he is going to the Century Church. He wants to survive. Go to the survivor base. Live on. Li Qing has never run like this before, recklessly and with all his might. Perhaps it was because the Peiyuan pill in his body had taken effect, or perhaps it was because at this moment he seemed like a new student without any worries. The white light that Li Qing had just felt in his mind appeared again, but this time it did not disappear and lingered in his mind for a long time. Li Qing stretched a line, and her strength was once again on the edge of exhaustion. Hold on. Just hold on. You can still run. You can still escape. Come on. Come on. Li Qing let out a roar, and the white light in his mind turned into a clear stream, permeating his whole body and washing away his fatigue. He ran faster and faster, his body became lighter and lighter, and his foot movements gradually accelerated into a shadow. Gradually, his whole body was almost like a shadow. He even surpassed the Junyi, and at this moment, only one final point remained in his eyes, which was the Century Church. Junyi stopped slightly, his thoughts flashing in his eyes as he watched the figure running ahead. Inferior Peiyuan Pill. Does it still have this effect? End of this chapter. Chapter 6 My name is Junyi, and I dare to ask the general's name. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 6 My name is Junyi, and I dare to ask the general's name. Chapter 6 H City Century Church The panicked people whispered, whispering in unison. Some cried in despair, while others sang their hometown songs numbly. A tense atmosphere filled the air. Did there be an earthquake just now? There was also a typhoon. What is that in the sky? Will there be aliens crawling out of it? Is it a legendary wormhole? Can someone explain that this thing? There won't be any monsters inside, right? Is the earth finished? It's a heavenly punishment. There are too many sins created by humans. It's a heavenly punishment. A Christian believer suddenly began to shout loudly, and the other voices in the crowd gradually decreased, leaving only the voice of that believer. Everyone's gaze converged on the believers. The believer felt the support of the stars and the moon, and his voice rose an eighth. Not long after, it will be the apocalypse. Have you seen those monsters? It's Satan. It's the devil. It won't be long. Eternal night falls. The world is destroyed. The mournful and sharp voice echoed in the empty church for a long time. Everyone fell into silence. Shut up. A loud shout interrupted the believer's next words, and Radar kicked the believer to the ground without saying a word. I'm still the Jade Emperor. What else should the believers wearing long robes shout? The radar action cleanly raised the gun and shot it on the floor on one side of the believers. A terrifying bullet mark appeared on the smooth floor, and the believer was instantly frightened into a cold sweat. It was obvious that Captain Radar's intimidation with this shot was still very effective, and he immediately remained silent and stopped speaking. Radar turned around, his face cold and stern. He spoke slowly, his voice steady and powerful, just enough for everyone to hear. The mutation is caused by an unknown virus infection. Dr. T is studying serum vaccines, and it won't be long before human society returns to order. The government's survivor base is indestructible, and as for the things in the sky, they are not aliens, nor are they heavenly punishments. 
I think it should be an abnormal celestial phenomenon caused by changes in the Earth's magnetic field, and similar phenomena have also occurred in peaceful societies. Don't be too strange. If anyone spreads rumors and creates panic, they will all be dealt with by military law. There was no sound from the crowd for a while, and the radar put away its guns. Just as it was about to give the next command, the ground shook again. A sharp pain came from the brain, and the amygdala in the brain emitted subtle fluctuations. The radar grabbed the table next to it, desperately trying to stay rational, so as not to collapse directly. Don't panic. Find cover. The radar gave the final command, and it turned black and fell down. Captain. Radar finally heard Tang Mei's exclamation, and then fell into endless darkness. When I woke up again, the radar was already tied up in various ways. Looking around, there are still some people who are also tied to fried dough twists, some are survivors, some are our own people. A chair in the century church was used as a cover, surrounding them in a circle, forming a median. Are you awake? Captain. How do you feel? Tang Mei saw the radar wake up and immediately flipped over her chair to get closer. How long have I been unconscious? Radar asked, feeling a strange sensation on his body that he couldn't explain clearly. About ten minutes. I'll let you go now, Tang Mei said as she began to untie the rope on the radar. Ah. Comrade soldier. We cannot guarantee that the radar captain has not mutated, so it's not good for us to let go rashly. The Christian believer in black robes suddenly shouted when he saw Tang Mei's movements, you must take responsibility for us people. Tang Mei angrily turned around and glared at the believer, if it weren't for Captain Radar, you guys would still be dying at home. That's right, the believer exclaimed, but what if Captain Radar mutates? Commodus people will wake up as zombies outside. Although Captain Radar looks fine now, who can guarantee that he won't be infected with the mutated virus in the future? Tang Mei became angry but had nothing to say, are you also thinking the same way? Tang Mei asked the other survivors in the church, and everyone fell silent for a moment. The result was self.evident. Tang Mei's fists creaked, but she was helpless. What the believer said is indeed reasonable. If she disregards everyone's wishes and releases the radar, in case something really happens, he won't mutate. His pleasant voice was like a clear spring truffle, which was refreshing to hear. In the crowd, a young girl in a white robe stood out. She had an outstanding appearance and a simple and elegant temperament, like a miracle in a desolate city. Her fair skin seemed to emit light, and the girl's eyes turned slightly, her every move resembling a flowing ancient painting. Everyone's gaze converged on her, Junyi's face remained as usual, but he felt a bit uneasy in his heart. She saw so many humans for the first time. He doesn't have any demonic energy on him, Junyi continued. Before the radar went into a coma, the girl was not seen among the survivors. This undeniable attire cannot be forgotten by radar. She was a survivor who only came after the earthquake just now, Tang Mei explained as she saw the radar's confusion. Is she alone? A young girl in the apocalypse broke through the army of zombies alone and came to the survivor's team. The radar looked at the young girl in front of me who seemed to have just walked out of the comic exhibition, feeling magical in my heart. No, there's also the college student with eyes next to him. That college student is very fast, like a mutant. Upon hearing this, the radar looked up at Li Qing behind the Junyi. Mutants, abbreviated as M, mutants, are mutations that occur after breaking through physical limits or extreme mental shocks. This type of person either possesses extraordinary strength, hearing and vision, or speed. The military base has long discovered this type of person and is secretly gathering these mutants with extraordinary abilities, intending to cultivate a superpower team. We must find a way to bring this young man to the northern base. Radar and Tang Mei were whispering there, and the rest of the survivors didn't take Junyi's words seriously either. Her ancient attire, combined with that very insightful remark, really lacks credibility in the apocalypse. 
Everyone has positioned the Junyi as a mentally disabled girl with a second-tier vibe and well protected by her boyfriend. However, due to the insertion of the Buick Regal, the atmosphere on both sides temporarily eased a lot. Junyi didn't feel angry at the sight, flipped over and jumped into front of the radar without any hesitation. The white skirt drew a graceful curve in the air, and the radar was stunned and stopped communicating with Tang Mei. Are you the general here? Jun Yi searched for vocabulary learned from the book in his mind, trying to communicate with the radar. The radar was still in a hurry to marvel at the Jun Yi's skills, and then heard the Jun Yi's very antique style of questioning. It couldn't help but nod, with a smile on its face. The relationship between that mutant and this girl is not ordinary. If you want to win over that young man to join the northern base, you must establish a good relationship with this girl. Junyi nodded at the radar and took out a dagger from the space. With great effort, he cut the rope on the radar body into several pieces. The long sleeves blocked the process of the dagger appearing, and before everyone could react, the Junyi had already pulled up the radar. The radar, who didn't know how to stand up, lowered its head and looked at the antique girl, causing its brain to temporarily shut down. The agile figure of the man and the slender figure of the girl stood in the center of the church, creating a sharp contrast. Juni nodded slightly and said, My name is Juni. I dare to ask the general's name. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 This is Heavenly Punishment. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 7 this is Heavenly Punishment Chapter 7 Radar is a tall and sturdy adult male, with a height of 186 and a weight of 79 kilograms. Not to mention a little girl who looks more than 10 years old, even a young man in his 20s may not be able to handle it. No one could see the Junyi's movements clearly. When everyone reacted, the radar had already regained its freedom and stood in front of the Junyi. You. The radar's eyes lit up and this girl was also a mutant. I didn't expect a girl to be a power mutant. This time out, it's really not a loss. If successfully recruited, become the main force of the team, how could you let him go? The believer shouted, pointing at Junyi. What if he turns into a zombie? The sharp voice caused discomfort for Junyi. She tilted her head slightly and said lightly, do you have the final say here? The believer choked his neck, his accusation choking on his throat, stuttering. After a while, his spear changed, and he bypassed the question and continued, he. If he mutates, what will we do? Our lives are in danger. Isn't it? The believer began to urge those around him to stand on his side. Junyi frowned and said, can you take us back to the survivor base? The two light and ethereal questions from Junyi left the believer holding back for a while without a word bouncing. He angrily shook his sleeve and finally dropped a threatening and sensational sentence before shrinking into a corner. Wait for the mutation. We'll all die. This is a heavenly punishment. Retribution, retribution. He shook his head and shook his head, saying it over and over again, hiding in the crowd. Junyi turned to look at the radar, and the radar's expression softened with a smile. Hello, my name is Radar, and I am the captain of the search and rescue team at the northern base. This is Tang Mei, the deputy captain. Tang Mei nodded slightly and said, hello. After Radar finished speaking, he gestured with his eyes and looked at Li Qing standing nearby. Don't you introduce it. The first time Li Qing faced a soldier so close, he was still a leader, and his waist unconsciously straightened a bit. Hello. My name is Li Qing, a college student from H City, majoring in art. Li Qing's answer was a bit too restrained, and after finishing, she nervously added, Ben. A local. Radar tried to show his friendliest expression and gave Li Qing a gentle smile. Li Qing suddenly stood even straighter, like a tightly charged stick that would jump up with just a touch. Captain. Junyi briefly thought for a moment before saying, Captain Lei, hello. Junyi hesitated slightly and spoke slowly, perhaps. I can do something for the people of the world. 
she continued, take me to the human survivor base. After speaking, Junyi looked at the radar with a somewhat unnatural expression and said, can you understand what I'm saying? I can understand. Radar quickly exchanged a glance with Tang Mei, nodded, and quickly said. Juni breathed a sigh of relief upon hearing the words and continued to inquire, Captain Radar, when will we depart? Upon hearing this, Radar glanced at the person behind him who was still unconscious and pursed his lips, saying, Today we need to use this place as a base to observe the situation of these people. The Radar confirmed, We'll set off tomorrow. If they can't wake up tomorrow, then we'll have to follow fate. The survivors heard the radar and a faint commotion appeared. Among the unconscious were their relatives and friends. Why? If they can't wake up tomorrow, will they have to leave it here and wait to die? Captain Radar. Please, I have lost my son and cannot lose my wife anymore. Can't we wait another day? Captain Radar is fine, and they must be fine too. Quiet. Tang Mei took a step forward to maintain order. We were supposed to leave today, and staying for one day has added great risks. If we stay for another day, none of us will be able to go back. The last sentence was resounding, and everyone fell silent. This matter came to an end, and the survivors gradually divided into two teams. Those who were unconscious and had relatives and friends wandered and rested near the quarantine zone, while those who were alone were far away, afraid of any mutation that might affect them. The two teams were clear and clear, with an extremely wide road separating them. The radar was also left inside the quarantine zone, the map was in my hands, and my eyebrows were furrowed into a Chinese character. Tang Mei, take a few brothers and explore the road before it gets dark. There was an earthquake just now, and the route we planned when we came here is no longer in use. Radar pulled out the map again in disgust with Tang Mei, saying, I just fainted. It was an unstable factor until I received a physical report of being disgusted with youth. I will stay here to guard, and the burden of exploring the way will be on you. Pay attention to safety. Also. Radar pulled out a pistol from his pocket, which he specifically used to deal with his infected and soon-to-mutate companions, covered in his own blood. He solemnly placed the pistol in Tang Mei's hand, and Tang Mei's face showed fear. However, the radar firmly pressed the pistol in Tang Mei's hand and said, If there is anything wrong with me, I will solve it immediately. And then lead the team back. Tang Mei's fingertips were cold, her breathing trembling. She closed her eyes heavily and nodded slightly, Okay. Those two young people must be taken back, radar took a deep breath. The northern base needs strength, and even more so, fresh strength. Tang Mei casually glanced at Junyi and said, That girl is very strange. I feel like her way of speaking is not pretentious, and it always feels very mysterious. What's wrong with this? Isn't Yanqing also a monster? Are there still few monsters in the northern base? The zombies have all come out, and even if two Ultramen jump out of that thing in the sky the next second, I won't be surprised. Tang Mei laughed at the words and put away her gun, which eased her heavy mood a bit. Now that you can be poor again, I have organized a road exploration. You can stay alive. Radar shrugged his shoulders and said, Then I won't say polite words like, Pay attention to safety. Come back alive. Tang Mei smiled and raised her hand, their fists facing each other, colliding with each other. In the other corner of the Century Church, Li Qing approached Jun Yi and whispered, Immortal. Jun Yi raised his eyes and said, Hmm. Watched by Jun Yi, Li Qing became nervous for a moment. He bent down, covered his mouth, and whispered, Captain Radar and the Deputy Captain are talking about us. Jun Yi nodded and said, I heard you. Li Qingwen, who had just organized a language report, took a sniff and breathed lightly. He had just been mentally prepared for a while before he had the courage to talk to Junyi. Now, his stomach was full and he was like a smokestack, blushing heavily. He stuttered and didn't even know where to put his tongue. I, um. 
Junyi looked at Li Qing's expression and waited for him to speak. However, after waiting for a long time, Li Qing didn't say a complete sentence, and his whole body became even more awkward and awkward. Junyi saw a vivid person for the first time and made some complex expressions towards her up close. She had never seen these expressions before. Grandmaster wouldn't have them. It's very fun and novel. Junyi's ink jade like eyes moved slightly, looking at Li Qing with novelty. Li Qing felt even more tense all over. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Eating Bread for the First Time. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 8 Eating Bread for the First Time. Chapter 8 Junyi looked up and down at Li Qing, a young man who had experienced the torment of the apocalypse and had not been taken care of for a long time. The black eyeglass frame covered most of his face, his skin was pale, his lips were dry, and his messy hair grew to cover his eyebrows and eyes. His long unwashed hair was tied to his head, like a pile of weeds that had not been taken care of. The dark blue sports short-sleeved shirt has a thread on one side, and I don't know how much sweat it's soaked in. There are faint yellow sweat marks on the armpits and back, and there is a faint sour smell. Black sports pants, a pair of white sports shoes with yellow hair and dirt, and a dry backpack. Li Qing was scrutinized even more tightly, and he knew clearly what kind of embarrassing virtue he was in now. Not only did he not know where to put his tongue, but his hands and feet also did not know where to put them. Junyi's gaze lingered on Li Qing's glasses. She reached out and pointed, wondering, glasses. Ah. Glasses. Yes. Glasses. Li Qing looked like a disconnected machine, suddenly connected to the internet and received instructions. He quickly took off his glasses from his face with stiff movements, and with a devout attitude, he bent down 90 degrees and spread out his hands to hand them over. This pair of glasses hasn't been worn for a long time, with water stains and dust on the lenses, a thick layer, and green copper rust accumulating on the nose rest. Junyi picked up her glasses, which she had seen in a book, but it was the first time she had seen the actual object. After casually holding it in her hand and looking at it, she turned to Li Qing with a loose gaze. Do you want to recover from the illness in your eyes? Li Qing looked up slowly in the direction of Junyi, but her gaze was not focused. Ah! Ah! Junyi raised his hand and used his spiritual power to tap Li Qing's forehead twice. It's not difficult to clear and restore the vitality of an injured eye. Li Qing's vision gradually became clear in front of him. He had been highly myopic and had some astigmatism since elementary school. I have long been accustomed to seeing the world through a pair of glasses. For a moment, looking at the clear and detailed world in front of me, I felt a bit confused. The flying dust in the air was right in front of Li Qing, who raised his hand in a daze and touched a patch of dust that seemed to be alive, with his eyes slightly moist. Nearsighted people wearing glasses will never have a residual field of vision. Li Qing knew for the first time that a pair of eyes could see so many fields of vision Junyi's gaze swept through the crowd and finally locked onto an unconscious person. She returned her glasses to Li Qing and stood up to walk towards that person. This person is different from others. He has a clean body, and even in the apocalypse, he didn't suffer much. What attracts Junyi is his glasses. The gold wire frame is agile and lightweight, with a delicate bird carving on it, which looks luxurious. This style is much more beautiful than Li Qing's, and it is also different from the eye style seen in the Junyi book. Junyi crouched down and shook his hand in front of the person. Seeing that he had no reaction, he raised his hand and took off the glasses. Chen Li, who was guarding his boss on the side, took a deep breath when he saw this. Hey! Chen Li shouted to Jun Yi, don't tamper with other people's things. Jun Yi looked at the eyes in his hand that had no degree, and happened to wonder why this person had no illness and still had eyes. He heard Chen Li's roar and raised his head slightly. Chen Li Chang's fierce and evil demeanor, with a straight eyebrow and eyes, coupled with a bloody aura of thugs and thugs on his body, made even an eight-foot strong man tremble when he roared. 
One is a tough guy who looks easy to deal with, and the other is a teenage girl who looks nothing more than a teenager. These two people met and immediately caught the attention of many people. Chen Li didn't want to cause trouble and his momentum weakened a bit. How can you move someone else's things? Junyi nodded politely and said, I was impolite. Then he brought his glasses back to the person. Just as I straightened my glasses, I met a pair of gloomy eyes. Junyi's mind flickered, and the person had already looked at her with a smile on their face. Miss, are you interested in my glasses? Junyi nodded calmly, thinking that he should have some expression on his face, so he unnaturally tugged at the corner of his mouth and showed a non-dot-standard friendly smile. Without permission, please forgive me. Wen Wen sat up straight, and Chen Li saw his boss wake up. He was eager to express himself, and his aura instantly became arrogant. Are you saying, forgive, or, forgive? So what do you want? Li Qin stood in front of Junyi and suddenly spoke fluently. I have returned my things. I apologize too. What else do you want? Your glasses are so expensive. Don't even touch them. In that case, why not offer them at home, burn incense before meals every day, and then count out three times. Look at your aggressive appearance. You. Chen Li widened his eyes and wanted to say something, but was interrupted by the radar. All right. The radar stood between Li Qing and Chen Li, since I apologize, it's not a big deal, so there's no need to pursue it. Chen Li snorted coldly and saw the radar loosen the rope on Wen Wen's body. Please don't cross the isolation zone, just move here, he said Wen Wen nodded, her gentle mask on her face flawless. When looking at the Junyi again, a curve of inexplicable meaning curved at the corner of his mouth. In the corner, a woman with only a pair of eyes exposed looked towards her. Her fearful gaze swept over Wen Wen and Chen Li, and finally landed on Li Qing for a while. Her mouth tightly pursed under her scarf. He is a superpower. He should be able to save her she doesn't want to be caught back if caught. She will die. And he will also die very tragically, very ugly. Maybe there's not even a whole body. The radar handed Li Qing and Junyi one bread and one box of milk each. I didn't receive any supplies just now, did I? Radar smiled kindly, maintaining a distance that was not too far or too close for the two of them. Thank you very much. Junyi took the bread and milk. Holding the colorful packaging bag in his hand, Junyi looked at it for a while before learning from Li Qing's appearance and tearing open the packaging bag. Woo woo. It's so delicious. Woo 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 woo. Li Qing was about to cry. He was so excited that he let out a sob and took a bite out of the milk. He took two gulps in his hand and exclaimed in amazement. Thank you for the blessings of my Maru. Seeing this, Radar smiled lightly and said to Li Qing, slow down. Ha, huh, just go back to the northern base. He calmly emphasized the four words of the northern base, and the corner of his eye kept watching Junyi in the dark. Li Qing looked like a college student, but he was so naive that he was easy to deceive. And Junyi. He couldn't understand her background and was unsure if he could keep her at the northern base. Ah uh ha. -huh. Li Qing was filled with tears of excitement and nodded repeatedly. Junyi looked at the bread in her hand, which was different from any food she had eaten before. I can't see the raw materials, and the shape is a bit strange. Seeing how fragrant Li Qing was eating, Junyi handed the bread to his mouth and took a bite. The soft bread mixed with sweet and delicious bean paste rippled between the lips and teeth, and the unique and soft taste surprised the Junyi. Is this called? Bread. The radar kept secretly observing the reaction of the Buick Regal, and naturally replied, It's bread, filled with bean paste. I don't know where you are from. You don't look big, how did you get here? Upon hearing this, Junyi regained his senses from the delicious food and a brief moment of confusion appeared on his face. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 Home Water Curtain Cave You are listening at Novel Full.audio 
Chapter 9 Home Water Curtain Cave Chapter 9 I Came Up From The Mountain Junyi thought for a moment, and his grandfather had given the cave a decent name before. He even had a sudden idea to hang a character on the cave entrance. Later, that character was devastated because it delayed the activities of Lady Bai. Grandmaster was angry with Bai Nyang Nyang for a long time, and every time he saw him, he would scold him with two words. The Black Snake What is written on that pair of characters Junyi briefly recalled and said, I live in the water curtain cave. Cough, cough. Li Qing choked on her milk and coughed violently. My neck and ears turned red, and tears and runny nose came down. He looked at Junyi, his gaze gradually becoming strange. After being stunned for a long time, the radar suddenly regained consciousness and let out a dry cough. Um. This. Radar scratched his head. Just recently, Radar was joking with Tang Mei, saying that he wouldn't be surprised if two Ultramen jumped from the sky. Now he retracts this sentence the Radar glanced up and down at the Buick Regal again and touched its nose. This girl doesn't seem like someone who likes to joke is it? A mental problem. The Radar's gaze quickly scanned the map in hand, only to find that there was no mental hospital nearby. The mountain where the girl lives is Huagua Mountain. Radar's head twitched and he continued to ask. Li Qing not only looked at the Junyi with strange eyes, but also at the Radar with strange eyes. Junyi thought seriously for a moment, then shook his head and said, Unknown. Huagua Mountain is from Journey to the West. As he spoke, the Junyi suddenly realized why the Radar was asking this question and explained, It's a duplicate name. Do you know Journey to the West? Radar suddenly developed a strong interest in this girl who seemed to be mentally ill. Idle book. Junyi took a bite of the bread in his hand and chewed it carefully. How old are you? Do you have any relatives at home? Sixteen, no family members. No family members. Radar raised his eyebrows. So you grew up in the mountains? Yourself. Junyi fell silent for a moment. Although her grandfather sometimes called her disciple, most of the time he called her by her first name. And she couldn't say what to call him. Sometimes she called him grandmaster, and sometimes she just called him old man. Prior to this, she had never considered what the relationship between the two should be called from a third-dot-party perspective. Master and disciple are not right, it seems that Yi and Sun are also wrong. After careful consideration for a while, Juni said, My ancestor raised me. Due to a brief silence on the Buick Regal, Radar suddenly regretted asking these questions. In this post-apocalyptic world, with the girl alone, her family may have already ah. It's really pitiful. This girl is still underage and has to go through these things. The key is that the mental state doesn't look very good yet Radar unconsciously thought of his daughter, whose life and death were unknown, and his heart felt heavy. Child, don't be sad. In the future, the northern base will be your home. You don't have to be shy, I will take care of you more in the future. Don't worry. Junyi glanced up at the radar and then took a bite of the bread in his hand. She is not sad. The radar saw the situation as if the Junyi was heartbroken and speechless, and it was also a wave of heartache. The ones outside. Junyi suddenly took the initiative to ask, what are they? Radar looked up at the sky outside and said leisurely, they were all humans before. They underwent an unknown mutation and began to devour humans, even devouring each other. If they were accidentally scratched and infected, they would quickly assimilate and mutate. But be careful. The official called them devourers, and among the survivors, most of them were influenced by movies and novels and called them zombies. Devourer, abbreviated as D, devourer. They have no memory, no consciousness, and the only driving force behind them is devouring. This is their instinct, and all available energy around them will be taken up by them without exception for their own use. After being devoured, they will evolve to a certain extent, possessing faster speed, stronger strength, 
and a body that is completely unrecognizable after fusion. A thought flashed in Junyi's eyes. How long has it been since the mutation first appeared? Radar briefly recalled and said, it's been over a month now. In the last month of the apocalypse, due to mutual devouring, the devourers in H-City moved much faster than before, comparable to the strength of a normal man's feet. However, fortunately, the number of them decreased significantly, so the northern base organized a radar team to carry out the mission. The Junyi followed the radar's gaze and also looked out the window. The Century Church had irregular patterns and different colored patchwork windows that had a medieval style. Through the windows, one could only see the irregular sky outside. The vortex in the sky was cut into several sections by irregular glass blocks, and when viewed with the eyes, it looked like a twisted and ferocious monster. In just one month, human society underwent earth-shattering changes. Junyi lowered his head and remained silent for a long time. Human society has been experiencing disasters for over a month now. Why did the ancestors and the creatures on the mountain only change yesterday? Because of that thing in the sky. There was nothing to say for a while. Night falls quickly, and darkness always amplifies fear infinitely. Survivors who are still keeping a distance during the day are cuddling together, and only when their bodies feel the heartbeat of other species will their hearts feel a sense of security. With an army armed with guns guarding them, there was no need to worry about life-threatening situations. The highly nervous survivors finally let go of their guard and fell asleep peacefully in the warmth of their companions. In June 2022, after the end of the world, it may be due to people's psychological reactions, or it may be because the weather has really changed. There is a faint hint of coldness mixed in the air, and even during the day, the light emitted by the sun carries a hint of coldness. The radar looked at the electronic watch on my wrist, which showed the time as exactly 11 p.m. There has been no news from the northern base for six hours in a row, I don't know if it was caused by that strange vortex in the sky. He didn't dare to tell anyone this terrible news. You go rest for a while, I'll watch. Tang Mei's voice came from the darkness, and the radar could see her face clearly, even her hair could be seen. After waking up, he hasn't been feeling quite right, and now he can actually see things at night. Did he also become a mutant? But he hasn't experienced any extreme breakthroughs the radar was not sleepy, so he shook his head and thought that Tang Mei couldn't see it. He whispered, you go sleep, I'll call you later in the night. Adhering to her trust in the radar, Tang Mei let out a sigh and closed her eyes to sleep. The radar glanced at the survivors who were still unconscious in the quarantine zone, and a thought flashed in their eyes. He also woke up the earliest, and so far, apart from the doctor, no comatose person has awakened. I don't know if the changes and abnormalities in my body are good or bad now. Suddenly, Jun Yi's words rang in his ear. He won't mutate, he doesn't have any magic energy on him. Thinking of the confident and composed appearance of the Junyi, the radar looked towards the palm of the hand. Magic Chi radar suddenly snapped out of his mind and chuckled at himself. What's wrong with him? Even a second-year high school girl can take her words seriously. Radar shook its head, looked out at the night outside the window, pinched the cigarette left in its arms, got up, and walked out. The guardian in the darkness left, and in the darkness, the hunter who had been staring at the prey slowly opened his eyes, Old Kong, is there a fire? Radar walked towards the soldier guarding the night and stuck a cigarette in his mouth. Old Kong rubbed his eyes and said, if you still have some inventory left, you can score me a bite before I can lend you the fire. The radar patted Old Kong's back in frustration and said, just slide, I'll give it to you. Old Kong grinned and took out a lighter, while making a sarcastic remark, isn't that a point of interest? Stop talking nonsense, fire. The radar snapped its fingers as it spoke, and a ray of fire shot out along the radar's fingers in the darkness. The scorching temperature and bright light flashed away, causing both of them to be completely black in front of each other. Then, they both froze in place. The smoke on the radar nozzle has been ignited, 
with a hint of orange starlight burning in the darkness. Slowly emitting a long smoke line. Old Kong looked at the cigarette dangling from the radar's mouth in shock and blinked fiercely. Team. Captain. Just now. Radar stood with his hand in a daze, the scorching temperature still lingering in his palm. His whole body was warm, and a force with nowhere to release roared in his body. The blood in his veins also boiled, and there was a surge of excitement all over his body, including his hair. Ah! Ah! A woman's exclamation pierced through the night sky and interrupted the radar's daze. A soprano in an octave glided through a silent night, like a mischievous cat scratching the blackboard with its sharp nails, making the listener's scalp tingle. Stand by. Radar decisively issued a military order to Old Kong, who was guarding the night, and turned around to rush into the century church that made a sound. End of this chapter. Chapter 10. Star Kiba Maru. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 10. Star Kiba Maru Chapter 10 The awakened crowd couldn't distinguish the situation and instinctively squeezed together. Li Qing was originally sleeping near Junyi when suddenly a soprano scream in his ear startled him, almost causing him to faint. His head, which was already sensitive to hearing, was buzzing with vibration. Li Qing wiped his ears and lowered his head to see that it was damp and bleeding. Tang Mei quickly turned on her flashlight to check what was going on, while the radar also rushed back. The power supply of the Century Church is still functional, so it was turned off to avoid the unknown monsters being attracted by the bright light at night. A flashlight cannot fully understand the situation on sight. Although the radar can see objects at night, other survivors do not. In order to avoid stampede incidents and unnecessary injuries, the radar immediately opened the switch. The Century Church, which was originally pitch black, was instantly illuminated with light, and the bustling survivors were blinded by the sudden light source, causing a brief moment of silence. Junyi looked up at the crystal lamp on the ceiling and saw the electric switch next to the radar along the wire. Turns out this is an electric light, it's actually used that way. The survivors rubbed their eyes and shouted, while headless flies spun around. Who called out? What's wrong? Did someone mutate? Zombies. Are zombies here? Quiet. Radar shouted, and a powerful voice echoed through the Century Church. Everyone fell silent and followed the radar's gaze towards the woman beside Li Qing who was screaming. This is an extremely beautiful woman, with long hair like clouds, shining apricot eyes, fair skin, delicate facial features, and a beautiful figure. At this moment, she knelt on the ground and looked pitifully beautiful, it seems to be a wooden leaf pill. Kayamaru. That popular celebrity. Isn't it? We've been hiding a celebrity here all along. There was an abnormality inside the church, and the radar thought it was a mutation in the unconscious person. Unexpectedly, nothing happened, just a woman calling out for no reason, and her face turned black. What happened? What is it called? What if it attracts a devourer? Kayamaru's slender hands gently covered her mouth, tears streaming in her eyes, and her body trembling pitifully, like a frightened rabbit. Yes. I'm sorry. Kiba Maru blinked her eyes, tears streaming down her face. Her eyes moved slightly, she lowered her head and sobbed softly, making her heart melt. Radar couldn't say anything harsh when he saw the situation, and his tone softened a lot. Miss Kiba Maru, have you encountered any difficulties? A pre-apocalyptic celebrity appeared in front of everyone, instantly pulling people into a peaceful era before disasters. The brief safety made them forget selfishness and numbness, and their precious conscience gradually awakened, and the sense of justice suddenly took over everything. A person raises their hand to uphold justice, and immediately everyone agrees. Yeah. Just say what you need. We'll help you. Did someone bully you? I am your fan. Miss Kiba Maru. Who bullied you? 
Kayamara looked greatly aggrieved as she trembled and raised her hand, inadvertently revealing the wound on her sleeve. The people who were not blind immediately took a breath of air when they saw the wound. My Maru raised his hand and wanted to point at Wen Wen. With a movement of his gaze, he happened to touch the chilling shade in Wen Wen's eyes. With a tremble of his hand, he pointed to Chen Li on Wen Wen Wen's side. It's him. Kayamara's voice trembled as she cried out, fully interpreting what it means to be a pear blossom with spring rain. He imprisoned me. Woo 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 woo. He also abused me. And even treated me. Woo woo woo, a slender and fair palm gently covered her thin lips, and a great beauty trembled as if experiencing immense pain, crying out about the devastation she had suffered. I finally managed to escape. I didn't expect him to come after me too. He was just about to catch me and leave. Chen Li's face was not good, and in the face of everyone's judgment, he looked at Wen Wen without any control for a moment. Wen Wen calmly tidied up his cuffs, still smiling gently. Don't talk nonsense. I don't even know you. Chen Li saw Wen Wen not speaking and immediately raised his voice to start sophistry. Are you saying that a celebrity self-destructs their reputation without any reason and falsely accuses you? That's right. No wonder he targeted a little girl during the day. So he had a malicious intention. Everyone stood on my Maru's side, and Chen Li suddenly became the target of public criticism. Jun Yi, who was named, looked curiously at everything in front of her. She turned her gaze to Mu Yi Maru, feeling somewhat puzzled. No one really touched her just now. It was she who approached Li Qing and brood for a while before starting to scream. Little brother. Please help me. Mu Yi Maru grabbed Li Qing's arm, his eyes slightly red, making people's hearts melt at a glance. Li Qing's ears were still bleeding, and the soprano just now made his eyes turn black. After another dazzling light, he knelt before his living idol. Mu Yi Maru. Li Qing experienced a blood reflux and even forgot to breathe. His idol is right beside him, so close. A short day's experience made Li Qing feel like she was dreaming, a dream before her death. At first, when he was on the brink of death, he met the guardian deity Junyi. After sleeping at night, he saw his own goddess. He was completely dizzy, and his already stunned head went on a temporary strike. At the moment when my Maru touched Li Qing's arm, Li Qing immediately numbed half of his body, searched for his divine soul for a long time, and was about to return to his original state before flying out into the sky. Mu. Miss Mu Yi Maru. Am I dreaming? I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming. Seeing Li Qing's foolish appearance, my Maru exclaimed in his heart that he was unhappy. If this person is not resistant, wouldn't he have calculated for nothing? So her eyes twitched slightly and her hoarse voice turned towards Junyi. Little sister, will you help me, right? I, I don't want to be caught back. This little girl is not simple, she is also a superpower. If she is willing to take her, she can escape from life. She doesn't want to die in the hands of that pervert. This little girl doesn't look like a pervert to this silly young man. Even if she were kept as a slave, it would be better than being dissected alive by Wen Wen Zhao. Jun Yi squatted down and said, Are you telling the truth? Kayamara's expression paused slightly, and his eyes turned red as he said, I, can I still arrange an unrelated person for no reason? Although Chen Li did not intend to directly arrest her just now, it is true that Wen Wen and Chen Li once placed her under house arrest. It is true that she has suffered so much that life is more difficult than death. Before the end of the world, she had just completed a section of work and went on vacation here, but unexpectedly encountered a major disaster. She watched helplessly as her agent died in front of her, and just as she was about to face death, Wen Wen appeared. Wen Wen appeared polite and gentle towards others. She thought he was the savior of this apocalypse, but to her surprise, he took her to the chaotic prison. Wen Wen is their leader. Those death row inmates torture her together, constantly molesting her, 
and the pain of being violated surrounds her, making her life more difficult than death. And that gentle, that pervert is watching from the side. Thinking of this, my Maru was about to crack his eyes and fell into a painful abyss. There seemed to be the lewd laughter and unpleasant words of those evil spirits appearing in my ears again. Later, when one wanted to untie her and she was tied to a wooden board, naked. That pervert looked at her with a sinister expression, playing with a sharp surgical knife in his hand, step by step approaching her, as if in his eyes, she was a naked skeleton, a pool of breathing flesh. She completely collapsed, falling into despair into the darkness. Fortunately, when one was called away at the last minute, otherwise she would have been completely dismembered and become the food for those evil spirits. She finally ran out of that haunted cave and, after enduring life and death, arrived at the survivor's team. She thought she would safely reach the human base to survive, but unexpectedly encountered the evil leader when when again here. This is the end of the world. Kayamaru felt a wave of despair at the thought of this. It's already the end of the world, with crises lurking everywhere. As a result, one one, this crazy person, refused to let her go in such a world. He is a persistent wolf, and the prey he is targeting must be obtained. He is also a complete lunatic, pervert. End of this chapter